Here's Dutton. Say hi, everybody. Say I'm needy today. Um, so I don't typically do a lot of Facebook Live stuff like this, but my Facebook feed is blowing up. I have clients, customers, agents texting me, asking me what is going on with real estate commissions. So there has been a long time lawsuit. There's been some settlements. Yesterday, some big news came out and stop. it has not been adopted by the courts yet. If things go through, it's proposed to start happening mid-July, but the age-old question of who pays the agent's commission is what this has all been over. So sellers raised their hands and said, hey, my typical 6% commission, 3% of that goes to my agent. Stop. 3% of that goes to the buyer's agent. Why should I be paying another agent to negotiate against me? Fair question, right? <clears throat> With that, the buyers are saying, well, wait a minute. You've built the commissions into your asking price and we're the ones paying your full price. So we're paying both of the commissions. Okay, so now the story is that listing agents, people who represent sellers, are no longer going to be able to advertise a co-op commission within the MLS. Why this matters is when I'm working with a buyer, I tell them that I work for X percent. Buyer, here's all the things I do for you. Here's how I negotiate. Here's how we find homes. Here's what we do during the inspection. Okay, I have a list of like 100 things I do <clears throat> to represent a buyer in a transaction. So I tell them, most of the time, this seller is offering an incentive for me and they are covering my commission. In the instance that that doesn't happen, we can proceed a couple of ways. Number one, you can pay my full commission or make up the difference between what the seller is offering and what you and I have agreed that I'm working for you for. B, we can try to negotiate my commission into the offer on your behalf. Or C, we just skip the home. If you're not willing to make up the difference in my commission, we cannot go look at it, okay? So this is how things have always been done. The challenge we have now is that when I'm searching for homes in the MLS, I am not going to be able to see which seller is offering my commission as a buyer's agent and which seller is not. So I'm gonna need to be calling, texting, emailing every single home that my buyers wanna look at and then having that conversation. Two are offering my fee. This one is not offering anything. This one is offering some of it. Do you still wanna go see these houses? Okay, so nothing has changed in that regard, other than the agent is gonna be making some more phone calls. Now, where this is also challenging, <coughs> uh-oh, okay. <clears throat> where this is also posing a challenge is lending is gonna to have to change. So right now, veteran buyers, anyone utilizing a VA loan, there is a law that states you cannot pay your realtor's commission, okay? So this is really screwing our veterans. This is screwing our first time home buyers, divorcees, single parents, the people that don't have a ton of extra money, which is actually the average American right now, right? So if you're looking for a home, the seller's not offering a commission to the buyer's agent, it's gonna be up to the buyer to come up with that difference. Now, there's some talk about, okay, could we utilize a seller concession? That means the seller provides a percentage of the purchase price or a flat fee amount towards the buyer's closing costs. So theoretically that would work in many situations, but various types of loans have different limits on the types of concessions or the amount of concessions that can be offered. So for instance, veterans, I think the concession is three or 4%. I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me. So now if the seller is not offering a commission, that concession is gonna be absorbed by the buyer's agent's commission and you have no more room to get a concession for maybe a new roof, some repairs, um, interest rate buy downs. So lending's gonna have to change because right now our VA buyers are really screwed by this new settlement. 
Um, and again, there are some certain loans, like an investment loan, if they're putting less than I think 15% down, the maximum concession is 2%. So if I have one of those buyers looking at an investment property, they're gonna have to come up with a difference. Um, buyers agents cannot be expected to work for free. They have very difficult jobs. Um, my business is split 50-50, 50% sellers, 50% buyers. Um, there is nothing like taking your buyers around, looking at multiple houses, writing multiple offers, not getting the offer accepted, having to help them through those difficult emotions. Now we go under contract, we go through inspections, something's wrong in the house. There's a lot of work that buyers agents do. So the clickbait that you guys are all seeing, realtor 6% commissions are going away. That is not the case, okay? What changed is that that co-op fee is no longer going to be offered in the MLS. So any buyer's agents who have not been having buyer consultations and just walking your buyers into homes without any type of representation agreement, number one, that's bad practice. And number two, you're going to get caught with your pants down because they're going to fall in love with a house that is not offering a commission and you just did your job for free. Okay. So sellers, buyers, who pays the commission? Like I said at the beginning, the sellers truly believe that they're paying the buyer's agent's commission. They're paying 3% or X percent to negotiate against them. Meanwhile, <clears throat> buyers are saying, no, that has been built into your asking price. We're paying that with our loan or cash or whatever. So that argument <clears throat> still remains. There's no clear answer. You can believe what you want to believe. Um, either of those options are very valid options. It just depends on which perspective you're looking at it from. However, the likelihood of buyer's agents now being paid directly by their buyers has increased, number one. And number two, the whole reason that buyer's agency agreements came out is because people were going directly to the listing agent and the listing agent's fiduciary is to the seller. So buyer's agents became a thing so that buyers had good representation. They had someone to fight and negotiate on their behalf. I believe that now a lot of buyers are going to go directly to the listing agent because they don't want to hire a buyer's agent. So what does that do? It takes away their representation. The listing agent still has to act ethically, fairly, honestly. However, they, they can't negotiate for their seller and negotiate for their buyer when they have different goals. So this is challenging. A couple years ago, they came out with the clear cooperation rule that said we can no longer do coming soon listings, off-market listings, pocket listings. We had to have clear cooperation so that everybody had a fair shot at the house. Well, now look what we've done. We've shot ourselves in the foot um, by essentially reducing, eliminating buyer's agents, um, certainly making it more challenging for buyers without a lot of money. So again, this hasn't gone into effect. It's proposed to happen mid-July. I think we're going to see a lot of lending rules change, especially for VA loans. Um, don't freak out. Don't assume things. Now, what I'm telling my sellers is you have never had to pay a buyer's agent, okay? That is always negotiable. You can pay me. We can offer nothing to the buyer's agent. However, you may as well be a for sale by owner if you're not offering to pay a commission. Who brings the buyers to your house? Is it the sign in the yard? Is it the Facebook post? No, it's the agent. Like, most homes are sold by an agent. So, if you want to exclude agents and say, no, we're not offering a co-op fee, good luck getting your home sold. And that's the honest truth. I think that if you are a seller and you want to get your home sold, you need to be offering a fair compensation to the buyer's agent, especially right now when the clarity of what's going on is muddy. Um, so... If you have questions, please reach out to me, reach out to your lender, reach out to those of us who have been following this for several years now, several months. Um, yesterday was just big news, made national news. I've had clients call me. I've had friends call me. I've had agents call me. So I wanted to just kind of do a little synopsis of what happened, why it happened, what the issues are today. And as we get clarity around this, I am happy to update you guys. So I see a lot of you are watching, some in the real estate industry, some not. 
I know that um, it's confusing for a lot of people. However, the agents who have good practices in place and they have buyer's agency agreements with their buyers, they articulate their value to their buyers and the buyers understand what it's the buyers understand the value of having a realtor on their side. I tell people, if you were being sued in court for $500,000, would you go to court alone or would you hire an attorney? You'd hire an attorney. Okay. Now, would you hire the cheapest attorney you could find or the best attorney you could find? And I don't understand when someone is talking about the largest financial transaction of their life why they think it would be smart to go at it alone. It is stupid. It's just dumb. So that's my opinion. That's my two cents. Coming weeks. Take care, everyone.